Hello, my name is Jessica wilbeck lemaire and today we will be making Dutch oven bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers. For this recipe, you will need four eight ounce packages of cream cheese. You need to take these out at least an hour before you start to cook for they need to be at room temperature. I would suggest using Philadelphia. You need three to six garlic cloves minced, a quarter cup of finely chopped sun-dried tomatoes, one and a half tablespoons of fresh basil, a pinch of kosher salt, and this, re this recipe calls for 12 jalapeno peppers, but it can be stretched to more. Today I will be stretching it to accommodate 15, and a pound of sliced bacon. The equipment you will need is, is a 12-inch Dutch oven, Today we'll be using two to accommodate how many poppers we are making. You need a Dutch oven trivet, and if you do not have one, we use a, the bottom of a foil baking pan and a heavy duty aluminum foil. And we'll sh show you how to make one later when we go outside. You need toothpicks soaked in water. You need a garlic mincer a dead bowl for all your jalapeno guts, <laughs> an assortment of knives, a cutting board, um, gloves. I highly suggest these because the jalapeno juice can burn when it gets on your skin and then if you end up touching your eyes or face anywhere that also tends to burn. Um, you also need a spoon so that you can scoop out everything and try and limit how often you are touching the jalapenos. For yourself, you will need a hat, and if you have long hair, I would also suggest putting your hair up in a pony or a bun. You need an apron, and as we'll be going outside for this, you do need shoes. You can't go around barefoot, it would hurt. Um, you will also need charcoal, which will also be outside, unless you are having a fire in your house. Um, so. First, we're going to start our coals. We like to start them. We like to start them before we do anything else, because then they're ready by the time we finish preparing everything. So the way we like to do it is we like to use our coals, and then we put them in a chimney because it lights them faster, and then they really take care of themselves. And also, if you use a big bag like this, you can just take the paper from the bag, tear it up, ball it up, and put it underneath, and then you just light it, and these, take, and these start to cook, and they're ready within an hour. Then, don't need those anymore. So over here, the handy dandy lighter, you can use matches if you prefer. Hopefully catch this flame. You light the paper that you put underneath. If you use damp paper like I do, like I happen to be at the moment, it takes a little bit longer, but not too long. And, what's, and I like to light mine in a few places just to make sure the flame gets going. And cuts fire. There we go. And then when we come back, when we're done preparing everything else, the coals will be ready. Before we handle the food though, we do need to go and wash our hands. So before you start cooking, you do need to wash your hands. Make sure you get everywhere and then Dry carefully. Don't want to get a mess everywhere, all over. So next we are going to prepare our ingredients for the mixture that will go inside the poppers. I like to start by doing all my chopping and mincing beforehand. First, we'll take care of the garlic. We only need three to six garlic cloves. So first we have to peel off all the outer skin to get to our cloves. And we need three to six. And since I like garlic, 
I'm going to add 6. I'm sorry if you don't. So we have 2, 3, 4. I'm a weakling. 5, 6. And then we can put the extra skins into our dead bowl and the, save the rest of our garlic for the next time we make this or something else we want garlic in. Then we take our freshly peeled garlic and we use our fantastic little garlic mincer. Put it in, put it over a bowl. Now minced garlic come out. And here's our last one. Of course it would be the tough one. And that's it for our garlic. Then we move on to basil. And as it is very inexact as how many leaves will go into the one and a half tablespoons we need, I would have one and a half tablespoons handy for us and chop and add it to the thing as needed. Stems go in the dead bowl. And you want it finely chopped so that it mixes smoothly and people aren't pulling big leaves pieces out of their teeth. And there we have our base hole. Clear up some space on our cutting board. It's really messy, but we will clean up as we have it cooking. And then we will try and get, as exactly as possible, a quarter cup of finely chopped sun-dried tomatoes. Again, it's very useful. Just have the cup right here to fill as we chop. And if you get, and if you get this kind or other dried tomatoes that are a bit juicy. It is sticky and is difficult to cut, and so it might take a bit longer, but it is very delicious and very worth it. Okay. 
We got it just about perfect to a quarter cup. It's very nice to laminate your instructions so that it doesn't get messy if you haven't near the cutting board. Our next step is to take our salt and our finely chopped ingredients and our cream cheese and use our mixing bowl and very nicely mix it all finely together. This, at this point, it is very nice to have had it being sitting out for a while as it makes the mixing process so much easier. Using it frozen is terribly difficult. There's not a twist spoon. So we have all our cream cheese inside. Boop. Add in our nicely done basil. Our sun-dried tomatoes. pinch of salt and our garlic and then we mix it till smooth. I'll use my handy dandy spoon. Okay, and once you finish stirring, it should look quite a bit like this, where you can see some of the ingredients, but mostly just looks like cream cheese. We'll set that off to the side and move on to our next step. Okay, so next we're going to be cutting the jalapenos for the jalapeno poppers. Before we start though, you have to make sure that you have all your gear. Your very important gloves, and eye protection is also important because if you have one of those really good ones that's really juicy and you cut into it, you really don't want to get into your eye. It's very bad, very painful. So we take one of our jalapenos and they're curved very slight, some of them very slightly, some of them more dramatically. And most things you want to lay them down and cut them just where it rests. But for these, you want to actually hold it up, take your knife, and cut it where it doesn't want to lay which means you have to be exceedingly careful. I like to put a thin line before I actually do my real cut to kind of hold my knife in place while I cut it. So you take your jalapeno and your very handy dandy spoon that we use quite often for this recipe and you gut it over your dead bowl and you want to make sure you get all the veins and all the seeds out. Unless you want to die from it being very terribly hot, it is very important. After you're done gutting it, it should look quite a bit like this. Oh, for these, which I did not mention with the first one, you want to keep the stems on. 
That will be important for when you want to eat them. If you lose a stem or two, it's no big deal, but do not take them off. And we're done. Next, we'll fill our jalapeno poppers with the delicious filling we made earlier. Now for these, it does not have to be exactly level, and especially considering how much mixture we make. So we don't want to have it fill it, oh, filled over much, but it's okay to have it, you know, a bit rounded on top. I was just doing it over the mixing bowl so you can add and subtract as needed. And I like to have just enough filling so that the jalapeno poppers don't burn my mouth. If you, if, while it is okay to have it, to have it have a gentle little round over the top, you don't want to overfill it because while it is cooking, there's a possibility of it popping and spilling and burning. And what has more jalapeno poppers are still pretty delicious. They're not quite as good as their perfectly made cousins. Now as you can probably still see from the top, we have quite a bit more filling left. But whoop, you can see inside the bowl, you, we could have fit a lot more poppers through. But if you don't feel like making 36 poppers, or however much that would fill, it can also be delicious for other recipes to use and as toppings for crackers. So now we are moving on to our bacon, because you can't have bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers without bacon. Now you take our bacon out of the package, boop. So now that we have all our bacon ready, you can take it all apart one by one and cut it in half, but, we, but the easier way to do it is to have it all like this, just to make it easier. But to be clear, we are not cutting it in half lengthwise such as that ice falling. We're going to cut it across like this so bacon goes around more. Just going to add my bacon back on there. Try not to cut yourself. It's a good plan to always have. And now we have enough bacon to wrap our bacon jalapeno popper, bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers. So you take one of your strips and you kind of want to stretch it a bit because you want to, it to cover as much space on the popper as possible. So I like taking the cut end and putting it at the top and I wrap it around so that it's not quite overlapping and go over and over and over and I try and get so that both ends are below my popper.
And so with both ends, blow a popper. You can take my toothpick and just try and make sure that it all stays together. Put it right on through. Boop. Just keep it pretty. And it is important to try and have both ends of the bacon, to have both ends of the bacon on the bottom because that will help it stay together when it's inside the Dutch oven. And that's one of the reasons we soak the toothpicks. It's not while it's in the Dutch oven and your popper is cooking, your toothpicks aren't. And here we are down to our last four again. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. The last of our bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers. So now we're going to go into setting up our Dutch ovens. So here's where we would be using a Dutch oven trivet. If you don't have one of those, there's a very simple way to make your own. We're going to be using our aluminum foil, and we're going to be doing a very delicate process with it. You're going to make these squares and very masterfully make a ball. And you're going to make three balls per Dutch oven. And you want to, when they're in there, try and hold this steady for you guys. You're going to want to space them out. And the reason we're doing this is to have easy airflow and in order so that they heat evenly. Because we don't want one of them being on a hot spot and burning while another one's undercooked because they didn't get enough heat. So now that we have, now that we've put the bottom of our tray on top and made a nice steady base, we're going to do the same for our other Dutch oven. If you're, go if you're near a Scout Shop or RE REI, I know how to say it, I swear, it would be very, very easy to find a Dutch oven of good quality. Okay. So now that we have added our trays and have our trivet ready, we put on our poppers. And they can be touching. Ooh, makes it difficult. They can be touching, but we don't want them overlapping too much because they will get stuck, the bacon will stick them together and make it difficult to take them apart when they come out. The first time I did this, I had a beautiful, beautiful, delicious mess because I had them a bit too close together. You should start in the center and work your way outwards kind of the opposite of what you do in a microwave, where you want to clear out the center. And now you're Dutch ovens are ready to go be set out on the coals. Okay, now it looks like our coals are ready. So we're gonna take it and move it off the flame, which is really totally by itself now. And when I, when I personally use my Dutch ovens, I like to use these metal oil pans and put them down the ground because I like the way it contains my coals and my Dutch oven, no mess, no fuss. And if you're camping, no forest fires, which is very good. Now I'm gonna take my handy dandy tongs, clack them together, make sure they work. And we are going to put, if I read this correctly, 15 coals on the lid and 10 coals below.
And that's our first dish oven, done and ready to be cooking. They will be cooked for 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how crispy you like your bacon. You do want to make sure that the bacon is cooked all the way through. Another fact about cooking with Dutch ovens is every 15 minutes, you want to turn the base counterclockwise, quarter turn, and the top clockwise, a quarter turn. And now we're just going to come back out and check them every 15 minutes to do our turns. So now it's been 15 minutes and we have to come out to do our rotations. Oven mitt or something else, do not touch it with your bare hands, it will burn. First we're going to get the big handle and turn it quarter turn one direction. Then you're going to go to the lid, which will be even hotter. So again, really don't use your hands. Do it quarter turn the other direction. It's very important that when you are checking your food or turning, especially with turning, I would suggest not lifting up. But when you're checking your food, do not pour the ashes from the lid into your food. It has happened before. It's a bit sad. You might cry. So now we've finally taken them off the coals. And I'm going to wait to see the final product. Do not burn the table. It's a very good plan to keep this on the ground or a tile. And here is our glorious bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers. They're very delicious and you'll be eating them momentarily.